In, in this case, it's a pleasure for me to, to introduce to Josep Cabedo. Uh, it's a pleasure because it's a new contact and it's somebody I, I didn't know before. Uh, this is the first time we met, we met online. And, and he's uh, actually in the Universitat Autónoma de Barcelona in the physics department. He's a young guy, he's very, very lucky. Uh, and he did his physics degree in, in the Universitat Autónoma de Barcelona, and then he following, followed by the master, Erasmus, Erasmus Mundus Master on Europhotonics. And he's finishing, he's about to finish his PhD in the quantum and atom optics group in the Universitat Autónoma. Uh, his, his PhD advisor is uh, Professor Alessio Celli, or Alessio Celli, if he's Italian, and he's studying quantum simulators with uh, ultra cold, ultra cold mm -hmm. atoms. And, and it was a surprise that I found this uh, excited state quantum phase transitions in a realm where in, in a system, like a spin orbit coupled bossy gases. And that, that's why he was invited to give this talk and present his interesting results to us. So you said, uh, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Francisco, for the kind introduction. And also thanks to you and the rest of organizers for the effort put into this seminar series. And uh, also for inviting me and giving me the chance to present the work. Uh, like Francisco was saying, I want to make a, a little disclaimer in the sense that in our group, we have never studied on a theoretical level the excited state quantum phase transitions. Uh, we deal with quantum simulators and with ultra cold atoms, but recently we have come tangentially to the subject. And, and so I think that it can still be of interest for the audience in the sense that it's an, an applied, it's an application of the excited state quantum phase transition theory to um, that gives an advantage in order to prepare quantum states of interest. So um, having said that, uh, this is um, uh, our group. The, the work that I'm going to present is now in preprint. And I have been doing it together with Alessio Selly in the group and Dr. Joan Claramun, who's now in Lancaster University. And this is the outline of the talk. I will dedicate quite a, a lot of time in, in, in to establish a, black, a background for the work since I have to assume that a part of the audience will not be uh, too familiar, familiarized with the, the subject. Then I will go to the specifics of the work and I will show the results included in the preprint. Okay, so let me start with a, a brief recap of the spinner condensates and, and why they are so popular to study quantum many body coherence physics and more recently also excited state quantum phase transitions. Um, so in spinner condensates, several internal atomic states are involved in the condensate. Typically in alkali atoms, these are um, states within a hyperfine state manifold. Like for instance, in rubidium, we will be dealing often with this example, the F1 manifold in rubidium uh, gases. In there, the, the, the Zeeman levels in the, in the manifold are taken as effective spin of degrees of freedom for the particles in the gas, which are the atoms. So in ultra cold atoms, uh, we are dealing with very low energies and very low temperatures. And particles interact mainly via S wave uh, two body collisions. So in, in these two body processes, the particles can interact through different channels with total compound spin, so different total compound spin, which are typically at least slightly different in amplitude. Then if we group all the terms and express them in the pair basis, uh, what we see is that they already appear this kind of spin mixing processes that have a structure that is analogous to that of four wave mixing in nonlinear optics. And that take place whenever these two scattering channels are different. 
And, but normally they are uh, in the same order of magnitude. So in general, this term, this contribution is much weaker than the symmetric part. In this situation, uh, all the spin states in the, in the gas can condense to the same spatial mode. When this is fulfilled, we can, uh, this is known as the single spatial mode approximation. And then we can treat uh, the non-symmetric part of the interactions perturbatively over these symmetric solutions. This, uh, this allows us to write the um, Hamiltonian in terms of these collective spin states, and where we only take into account the action, the perturbative action of the non-symmetric part over the, the symmetric solution. And it takes this uh, very simple form as a, as a macroscopic spin Hamilton, if you want. So this framework was developed by back in 1998. And it already predicts that, for instance, a condensate that is prepared in a polarized state initially and let evolve in time will undergo coherent spin mixing in characteristic times that depend on the spin interaction energy in the gas. This has been checked several years later in the laboratory. This, for instance, was uh, observed in rubidium condensates, where they are able to measure this spin mixing dynamics and also to, to relate it with the non-symmetric part of the spin, the, the two-body collision. So we see that spin or VECs can provide a simple frame, framework to observe uh, coherent microscopic dynamics, quantum dynamics. And also they have, they have several advantages that have made them very popular. And essentially the most important is that ultracoal atoms have uh, a, large, a low, a large degree of tunability. So they allow to simulate a lot of, a lot of interesting physics in a very clean environment. Uh, unlike in solid state or molecular systems, here we can isolate very well the parts of interest in the system. Like in the example that I just showed, we can isolate the spin dynamics from the motion of degrees of freedom. Actually, uh, we can tune additional terms often that have no analogs in condensed matter physics. But here I will focus in this situation where we, to this spin, spin interacting Hamiltonian, we add a, a linear contribution. This can be done very easily by microwave dressing the, the internal spin states near uh, some hyperfine transition. And uh, the dressed states then can be control the, their energies independently in a way um, setting this effective quadratic Zeeman shift that can take both positive and negative values. And already the interplay between these two terms can give rise to an interesting many, many body quantum ground state diagram, which includes phases that are highly entangled. And we will come later to that, the phase diagram will appear later on. Uh, but for now, what I want to stress is that already with this simple framework, which is a bridge of experimental um, state of the art, uh, we can observe, oh, there has been a lot of protocols to observe nonlinear, so non-equilibrium dynamics, uh, the generation of a spin quizzing and microscopic entanglement with potential applications in metrology and so on. And, and there's indeed a, a, a very extensive literature that deals exclusively with this system. Here I've listed a few examples that I think they are remarkable, but the list goes on and on. And more related to the topic of this, um, uh, of this seminar, more recently, the same uh, system has been studied also in terms of this excited state quantum phase transition. For instance, this work, in this work, they observed uh, signatures of a dynamical quantum phase transition that is in correspondence to the excited phase to, to a, a phase transition in an excited state. Essentially, they prepare the ground state of the system with this co-parameter large and negative, and they, they quench the system to a positive value and let the system evolve. So they observe that at certain critical value, there's a non-analytical change 
in the behavior of the induced spin oscillation, uh, both in the amplitude and in the period of this oscillation. And that this critical value corresponds to the, the boundary of a phase transition in the most excited state. Then in this other work that also showed up in the first seminar, talk, talk in the seminar series, they studied again the same Hamiltonian in the, mill, in the mean field regime. And they find that actually they can distinguish three excited phases that span, that span all across the, the excited diagram. And they are able to identify each phase with a single topological order parameter, which is of global nature. And like in the ground state phase where the, for instance, the population of the spin of the zero spin state is already a local um, order parameter. Here we have this global order parameter that they can define mm, through the behavior of the classical phase space trajectories. Also the phases are, are separated by these boundaries in which they observe this divergence of the density of states. So um, as you see then, uh, spinor gases provide a, a flexible tool to explore also excited state quantum phase transitions. And in our work, what we have is that uh, we present that spin orbit coupled bosons and condensates can also realize this same collective phys spin physics that I've been talking about. And in particular, then inspired by these studies on excited state quantum phase transition, uh, we, we design a protocol to prepare in an excited state the ferromagnetic stripe phase of this spin orbit coupled gas. So before going to the specifics of the, of the work, I will, I, I will explain a bit the physics of spin orbit coupled VCs and why these ferromagnetic stripe phases are interesting in the first place. Or why would it be convenient to go and prepare it in an excited state? Okay, so um, spin orbit coupling can be understood in, in, in very simple terms. So in the presence of an electric field, a particle that is moving experience, experiences in his rest frame, a magnetic field that the strength of which depends on the velocity of the particle. Then this combined, combined with the Zeeman interaction that tends to align the spin to the external magnetic field gives the, the Hamiltonian of the particle this contribution that is linear in momentum and that depends on the spin composition of the particle. This in materials, this scenario can show up, for instance, where due to inhomogeneous inhomogeneities in the, in the structure of the material, there's a net non-zero electric field in some layer. And so spin orbit coupling is a, um, it plays a fundamental role in many phenomena in condensed matter physics, including the spin hall effect or topological insulators, and has also been proposed as a mechanism in many spintronics uh, protocols. But in ultra cold atoms, this phenomenon does not arise naturally since ultra cold atoms are of ne uh, are charged neutron. But nonetheless, there has been uh, a lot of effort in the ultra cold atom community in order to be able to simulate the charge physics in general. And in particular, about a decade ago, in the group of Ian Spielman, they realized with a very simple um, approach, a form of synthetic spin orbit coupling in the atoms based on Raman dressing. So basically, Raman dressing is a two photon processes that in an alkali atoms, they couple uh, two fine, so fine structure states of resonantly to the excited, to the next excited uh, fine structure state. Typically they aim uh, somewhere between this D1 and D2 lines where the, they are 
far enough from resonance from the both of them, but they also minimize the, the scalar light shift. And what's relevant here is that the, the scale, the energy scale of these transitions is very large compared to the energies in the system. So, um, so we have a large recoil momentum from this transition that is uh, a rec large recoil momentum and large um, recoil energy when compared to the characteristic scales in the ultra cold atom system. So in the semi-classical picture, this translates into a coupling between these two spin degrees of freedom that is position dependent that, that rotates uh, with a wavelength that is short compared to the length scales in the gas. So in this sense, we cannot get rid of this uh, position dependence by, I don't know, electric dipole approximation. But, what, but given that this oscillates with a single frequency, special frequency, we can go to a rotated frame where this dependence is translated into a linear term in momentum. In this frame, the, the Hamiltonian then has this um, structure where naturally it appears this spin orbit coupling term, which in turn can be tuned externally by playing with the angle of the, of the Raman beams involved in the coupling. And we also have this extra effective magnetic field terms that can be controlled with uh, the tuning from resonance to the, of the Raman transition and with the Raman strength. So with the intensity of the laser. So, um, but perhaps more importantly, uh, compared to uh, spin orbit coupling in intrinsic materials, here we, we can realize this effect in, in ultra cold gases that are of bosonic nature. So this means that we can access, for instance, uh, super, super, um, super fluid phases that have a spin orbit coupling. And this, uh, have no analog in, in condensed matter physics. And so they have attracted a lot, of, a lot of attention. Actually, the interplay of this, the dispersion band of the gas, which is largely tunable with the properties of the Raman beam and the interatomic interaction of the atoms on the gas, give rise to many interesting phenomena, such for instance, a, an excitation spectrum that has an isotropy and a roton mode, and also a phase diagram, a rich phase diagram that includes three different phases. So when the coupling is strong, the lowest dispersion band has a single minimum at the origin, and then the gas has this conventional uh, Bose-Einstein condensate form with a tunable effective mass. But if we lower the, the strength of the coupling, we enter in this two minima regime where the particle can spontaneously condense in a minima, in a non-zero momentum. So the, the wave function of the condensate is, is, is like a plane wave effectively. Uh, and this breaks, so there's a, a spontaneous breaking of the time reversal symmetry. And perhaps even more interesting in, a, in, in ferromagnetic gases, the spin interactions in a certain regime of, the, of parameters can stabilize the simultaneous occupation of these two minima in the band. This phase we, um, will have several interesting features and, and we will focus on it. So, uh, like I say, um, we can think of the states, the vicinity of the minima as two effective spinner, two effective spinner states, two dressed states. And then the, the stability of the phase can be easily understood from the dressed uh, spin interactions. Um, the interactions between these two spins 
have two contributions, one that comes from the intrinsic experience being interaction, and another one that comes from the dressing itself, from the fact that the modes of this, uh, this vicinity have a slight uh, mixture of spin composition. So when this spin-spin interaction is positive, the system will favor the simultaneous occupation of both uh, spin states, the spin states, and um, because they, it wants to minimize the total magnetization. So what's interesting here is that the two dressed spin states are actually separated in momentum space, and that and they have a non-zero overlap. They are not completely orthogonal. So simultaneously occupying both states leads to interference patterns that especially modulate the density of the gas uh, with an amplitude that is proportional to the strength of the coupling. So in a way, uh, we have that the system at the same time breaks the spontaneous gate symmetry by condensation and also the, translation, the continuous translation symmetry. So people has argued that this system exhibits properties of a super solid and has attracted a lot of experimental or theoretical interest. However, um, despite the interest, the phase is actually very difficult to realize experimentally because in most atomic species, the interactions are nearly symmetric. And so the, the region of the stability where the phase is, is favored is very small. Still, the, the miscible to phase separated transition has, has been able to, so it has been measured, but not in the ground state, but rather in a, in a metastable, with metastable states, where they prepared a state in an initially spin mixed, and, they, and then they let it evolve for some time. And they see that from the critical value and on, the system rapidly uh, goes into the phase, separate, uh, phase separation. But still, uh, the super solid properties will be related to these uh, density modulations, which are actually still harder to observe, mainly because they, um, they only occur for coupling strength below the critical value. And so um, the, the, their amplitude normally is very, very small. Um, still, it has been observed in experiments using some tricks. The tricks are basically focused on enlarging this region of stability. For instance, in this experiment, what they did is instead of using Zeeman state as a spin state, they use um, orbital degrees of freedom as effective spin states. Then doing so, they can control the overlap of these two states in a super lattice by adjusting the effective spin and the interspecies spin interaction, which gives a, a largely non-symmetric spin interaction overall, and so they can enlarge the, the, the region of stability. Then these two modes are ram and rest, and they obtain analogous um, stationary stripes that arise from Raman-induced spin orbit coupling. Also, more recently, they have been able to measure with Bragg, diffract with Bragg diffraction the density modulations uh, away from the from the miscible phase. So due to to trapping to confinement, there's a, a small region within the gas for which the the miscibility persists even um, even when the interactions want to favor the the phase separation. So this region uh, decreases by with increasing Raman strength, but the the, the, um, the Bragg signal can still be detected for a while. In any case, the supersolid nature of the phase is still debated, and nowadays the the the, the, the research is, is focused is shifting focus towards the, the excitation spectrum. 
In this regard, there's this uh, recent theoretical work where the, they study this with a, assuming a gas with a, a strong non symmetric interaction. But today, no, today, no experimental work have uh, addressed this in, in spin organ. So um, I hope I, I have convinced you that uh, spin orbit coupling and in particular the study of the straight phase has generated a lot of interest in, in the last decade and that there are actually open questions to address. In this regard, in our work, we propose another mechanism to prepare um, the straight phase of a spin orbit coupled gas. And to do so, uh, we rely on, the, on these results from excited state quantum phase transition, and we prepare the state in excited phase instead. Okay, so in our work, we consider this Raman dress, this, this form of spin orbit coupling that emerges from Raman dressing, but we consider it for a spin one systems in which three internal states are nearly rationally coupled by Raman transition. We base our implementation in this work in the group of Ian Spielman from 2016. But essentially, the, the, the concept is very similar to what I just explained, in the sense that the drum and dressing induces this um, position dependent magnetic field. And when we go to the frame that rotates with this, this uh, turns out into an effective spin orbit coupling coefficient. <clears throat> Here, um, we have three states instead of two, so the phase diagram is richer in the sense that we can distinguish three regions in which we have a single minimum, a two minima, and a, and a three minima regime. And also we have an additional term, which is this effective quadratic Zeeman uh, term that is in, an, in analogous to, to what we've seen with the spin organ. So we will be interesting in this, region here of the parameter space, that is the weakly coupled regime, where the, the system has this nearly degenerate three minima structure. And we're interested in this regime, in these conditions, because here it is clear that the interplay between two body collisions and Raman dressing can give rise to these processes that exchange large momentum and also um, uh, flip the spins of the particle involved. So, and this will act as effective spin mixing parameters like the ones I've discussed earlier. But, um, so what we want to do is to go to a regime where we can isolate this physics in a similar fashion. So we will go to, uh, to we will focus on the low energy landscape and, and we will truncate the momentum expansion of the lowest band field operator around the vicinity of each minima. And there we can, uh, since we are, we will consider the, that all the energies are much smaller than the recoil energy. These three different regions will have uh, no overlap and we can consider the action of the field operator in, in each of them as an effective component of an effective pseudo spinner field. Then we can write the, the Hamiltonian of the system in terms of this spinner field, this pseudo spinner field, and keeping the terms up to second order in, in omega over four energy recoils, uh, recoil energy. We can rewrite the Hamiltonian, the truncated Hamiltonian as this. Again, grouping the terms in a symmetric contribution. It's symmetric in pseudo spin state. And then a non-symmetric contribution. And what we immediately see is that as expected, even in the absence of um, non-symmetric collisions, Raman-induced spin-changing collisions emerge in the gas and they are proportional to the um, Rabi frequency squared, so they can be controlled. 
So now we, we have all the ingredients that we need and we will do exactly the same as before. We will go to a regime where this non-symmetric contribution is much smaller than the symmetric one. And we will truncate the field operators to just three eigenmodes of the symmetric part. So the symmetric Hamiltonian will have um, three self-consistent states at the vicinity of each well in the dispersion band. And then the, the non-symmetric contribution will act perturbatively on top of this solution. So if you work it out, what you see is that in the end, you end having this effective spin Hamiltonian again, effective collective spin Hamiltonian, in which we have, again, two contributions, an effective spin-spin interactions, which is now a bit more complex, since we have to include the spin orbit induced interaction and the intrinsic interaction. Then we also have the, the magnetic, the, the linear terms, uh, and also have this condition. So we can also tune this up and down externally. And finally, if, um, so the, the, the total Hamiltonian preserves the, magnet, the, preserves the magnetization of the system. So it's block orthogonal magnetization subspaces. And we can go to the subspace of zero magnetization. And there, actually, the two contributions to the spin-spin interaction uh, can be grouped into a single term, and we recover this effective Hamiltonian that has the same form as the one describing uh, spin dynamics in a spinner condenser. So uh, um, we can we have this effective model that, that is saying that the the Raman rest spin one gas can be treated as an effective spin or condensate with tunable spin interaction. So uh, this environment automatically could be employed to realize the same physics that we discussed earlier. But on top of that, and, and, and with extra degree of tunability, actually, but more importantly, uh, here, due to spin orbit coupling, we have the, the, the structures in, in, in spin space that the, this Hamiltonian will explore will be correlated to orbital space structures. And this correlation is what we exploit in order to generate the stride phase. Joseph, one, one question, maybe I, I was lost. Can you go back to your Hamiltonian one second? Where? Uh, the previous, yes. Because here L, L, C, L, X, and L, Y are, uh, well, L square is the is an angular momentum, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a collective um, angular momentum. Oh, and L, C, Z, what is, because maybe I got lost there because. Uh, yeah, it's here. Yeah, I, perhaps I should um, have yeah. uh, paid a lot of, a bit more of attention. Mm -hmm. No, this is an, an, an um, um a tensor magnetic term, if you want. Actually, it's just the, the population, uh, the population in the H wells okay. eventually, but in terms of spin variables, it's it's a, it's a tensor magnetization, effective tensor magnetization field. Mm -hmm. It's the same that appeared for for in, in the case of a spin or physics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Okay, so like I say, uh, we want to exploit this correlation between the, the structures in spin space and the structures in orbital space. So now that we have this effective spin Hamiltonian, the parameters of the effective spin Hamiltonian can be written in terms of the parameters of the Raman dressing. And we can express the, the phase diagram of this uh, instead of with just one axis, we, we, we need two axes. And here we see that we can distinguish two, two regions when the gas is ferromagnetic, like in rubidium, we use the values for rubidium. So there's a region where this spin-spin interaction parameter is positive, so it's an antiferromagnetic regime. And here the phase diagram has two phases, a polar phase 
in which all atoms occupy the spin zero state and a so-called twin fox uh, phase in which the atoms evenly occupy the edge wells. The two phases are separated by a first order phase transition at epsilon tilde equals zero. And essentially it's, uh, these are magnetic phases in the, in the sense that, that interactions, uh, what they do is they minimize the spin and then the, fa the phases are only favored by the magnetic Hamiltonian. There's no competition between the terms. But if we go to the other region of parameters where the spin interaction is actually ferromagnetic, an additional phase shows up, which has a more complex structure and which favors the simultaneous occupation of the, all the spin states. And here the, 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 the transition is of second order nature. And actually is a phase that uh, stems from the competition between the, the interactions, which want to maximize the total spin in the system and the magnetic terms. And like I said, here we have uh, the fact that this phase for this effective spin or Hamiltonian is in correspondence to the ferromagnetic stripe phase of the spin one gas, which basically shares uh, uh, a lot of properties with the stripe phase for the spin one half. And sadly, it also shares the property to be <laughs> experimentally very hard to access. Uh, again, um, for typical gases that the region in which this phase stabilizes is very small. But here it comes the trick. So it's easy to see that the, actually the ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic Hamiltonian are related in a way that the most excited ground state of the ferromagnetic Hamiltonian is the ground state of the anti-ferromagnetic Hamiltonian and the other way around with the sign of uh, epsilon flipped. So if we go to the most excited, this is the, the phase diagram in the most excited manifold of this effective Hamiltonian. And here the, the, the regions have flipped. So now the ferromagnetic or the equivalent to the ferromagnetic regime here takes place in at larger omegas and remarkably, the, um, the, the stripe phase, the BA phase, it also shows up in a much lar larger region in parameter space. So what is the idea? Um, on top of that, we are lucky in, in the sense that in the ferromagnetic um, phase diagram, the, the, the energy gap at the boundaries closes, uh, has a weak dependence in the total number of particles. So we can still maintain a finite gap with a, a, a large number of particles. So uh, our idea will be to prepare a state in the most excited manifold in the polar phase where it will be easy to do and then drive it adiabatically across the phase transition to reach this state, which, which will correspond to the ferromagnetic state. This idea was uh, implemented with the spinor gases, where they wanted to prepare these um, broken axis symmetric and twin fold states due to the fact that they contain um, large uh, macroscopic entanglement and they sell it in terms of the, of the potential in, in metrological application. So here we will do the same because actually we have the, all the requirements to do so because we can access this manifold, like I said, in a polar phase, for instance, in an initially undressed, so at omega zero, we can prepare the, the polar, a polarized spinner here and then adiabatically ramp up omega to be at, at the initial conditions. And from here now, then adiabatically mm, drive the parameters slower now to cross the, the gap of the phase transition 
has happened. Okay. But we have to be careful. So it looks good, but we have to be careful because we have done a lot of approximations to arrive to the effective Hamiltonian. And actually, we, are, uh, we don't know with precision where the effective model can break or not and how stable it will be with respect to fluctuations in the parameters and so on. So to this aim, uh, the best we can do is to go and do numerical simulations. And so what we do is we simulate the, the gross Pitayevsky equation for the full gas, Ram and Dresd spinner gas, and, and simulate the exact protocol that I've just explained. Um, however, we find the first problem is that in the protocol that I have described, the initial state is prepared in a fog state. And, the, and at this point, the dynamics is not uh, included in the mean field. It's not covered by the mean field equations. It's, it's started by quantum fluctuations. So mean field simulations of the whole gas will won't cover the, the physics of interest. But this can be solved easily by instead of going in the most excited manifold, we prepare a state that is near the most excited. So that is with a small um, number of particles in the edge well states initially in a coherent state. Um, here I, I show the simulations of full quantum simulations of this effective model and mean field simulations of also of the effective model. And we see that as we increase alpha rapidly, the, the both approaches converge. So in, in for the simulations of the full gas, we do the same. And we tune the parameters of the Raman Des and the trapping and so on, so that we are in the right um, parameters of the effective model. And this is what we obtain. This is a simulation where we load the gas initially in the polar phase and we drive it adiabatically across both phase transition. Here we have the comparison between the gross Pitayevsky of the, of the whole gas and the full quantum simulators, simulations of the, um, of the three mode model, which show an excellent agreement in this regime of parameters. Also, we see that uh, here there are two snapshots of the state along the drive, one in the middle and one at the end. And as expected, what we see is that the population is initially in the central well, and, as, and, and it keeps uh, going to the edge wells. And at, the, at half of the drive, where the thermodynamic uh, state phase is supposed to be, we actually see that the system exhibits this um, density modulation that I was talking before. So it looks promising, but we have to take uh, one thing in, common, in consideration. In this example, uh, I followed this red dashed line in the, in the excited phase diagram. And I, I um, so uh, the simulation goes across this in a total time that is of 600, that corresponds to 600 milliseconds. So you can go faster, but then you lose adiabaticity with respect to the gap. And this is, um, this can be a problem because actually due to Raman dressing, the system is subject to a lot of heating, a lot of atom loss. And the lifetime, currently, I think that the lifetime of the spin one, spin orbit couple and those gas is in the order of a few hundred, 300, 600 milliseconds. But okay, so we only need to go half the way of this drive to, to achieve them, to enter the strike phase, actually even less, we could prepare it here. But still, uh, one can say, okay, but you say that the, this, the spin mix in dynamics is proportional to omega. So you could prepare it at larger omega, for instance, and go faster. We have this, this freedom. But actually, if, if you do this, you'll see that, like I was saying, the, 
the three mode picture rapidly breaks as we as you, as you increase this, uh, this the energy scale of effective model. So it can persist for a while, but eventually uh, the picture deter deter deteriorates. Um, here, what I plot is the, the total population within the three modes that I consider. So as you see, in the case that I uh, just shown, the population basically remains almost all of it in the, in the subspace. But as we increase the strength of the Raman coupling, um, we keep losing. So we are, keep exciting particles outside the three mode. So, but why does this happen? Well, the main reason at, at this, uh, this regime is that initially we have this epsilon over lambda negative and large and minus three. So for large lambda, actually, we approach the next family of excited states that we have truncated out. But then in this same condition with the same values, one could argue that when we are nearly the, the resonant, nearly so near to the resonance of the spin changing collisions, these terms won't, won't be in resonance anymore. So thanks to the tunability of our uh, spin changing collisions, what one can think that actually we can dynamically tune this parameter up as we approach the resonant condition. So we start with a weaker spin changing, uh, so spin spin interaction, and we keep increasing it as we approach resonance. In this way, we can keep the robustness, and at the same time, we can be faster. So this is what we do. We simulate this other trajectory now, where, where we start at the same point, but we approach the epsilon tilde zero line, which is here, along by increasing the, the strength of the Raman coupling. So we will have two advantages here, aside that we can go faster. If we increase the energy scale of the system, we will also be more robust against noise fluct and parameters fluctuation against noise. And also we will even enhance further the, the, the size of the density modulation. So it's convenient to go. So these are the results of, of, a, of some simulations across the, 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 this line that I shown. And here, what we now include also fluctuations to the parameters of the gross Pitayeski that are compatible with the state of the art um, calibrations in the experiments. And, and what we do is we run the simulation with um, fluctuating parameters. These are the, um, the mean values and the shaded regions are the, 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 the errors, the associated errors. And we averaged several realizations. I think it's 20 of them in these two figures. And we see that, that indeed we are able to capture the phase transition as expected as signaled by these two observables, which is the tensor magnetization and the total uh, collective spin as expected. And more importantly, uh, here there's a snapshot, a snapshot of the state at the end of the day for a single realization. And we see that it indeed has all the properties that we asked it for. It's a, it's a ferromagnetic stripe and we can tell this from the density uh, from the density modulations, also from the spin density modulations and the pneumatic density modulation, which are in the expected periodicity as an amplitude. And all of this is achieved now in 150 milliseconds, which, which should be uh, accessible in a real experiment. And like I said, the noise is in accordance to a realistic ma magnetic noise and realistic stability for the, for the um, intensity of the laser beams. 
So with that, I, I, I have arrived at the end of the presentation. And so basically, uh, to connect it again to, to the, the topic of the seminar, we have used an excited state quantum phase transition to provide with a better or at least alternative uh, preparation to engineer a quantum many body state of interest. And so thank you for your attention. And Very nice, very nice talk, Josep. Uh, and, uh, in a, so let's let's open a round for questions. You can either raise your hands or just uh, unmute. And and I see Ami is raising yeah. his hand. So Ami. Yes, thank you. Ahead. First of all, thank you. That was very very interesting. I want to ask you about this relation that you showed about H zero. There was this duality relation that it was a sim anti symmetric in, re in replacing the sign of lambda and epsilon. Mm -hmm. You had this uh, H0 relation for the minus, yeah, this one. Ah, so so yeah. this is, yeah, that's interesting. This is like a duality relation. Uh, is that something that you found or is that guaranteed? Uh, or is that no, it's, specific to the to the approximation that you're using? No, or is it a... no I think it's 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 quite simple in, in the sense that so this is the Hamiltonian, and and like and, and saying that ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic interactions have opposite sign of the spin uh, interaction parameter, and then if you flip both the sign of, of this parameter and also of epsilon. This is equal to minus the whole Hamiltonian of the of the original parameter. Yeah, but but if but, but you, if you have additional terms, then yeah, this of course, if you will have not, additional will not terms anymore. No, but the, yeah, that's true. If, if you have additional terms that do not flip sign, then you don't have this relation anymore. But somehow maybe I can comment. This is true in a sense. This is would be not true that uh, we will change, we replace the full Hamiltonian, but somehow you should imagine that this is like, we are describing like a band in the middle of a, a lot of other states that are separated from the gap and we forget about them. That means that uh, you can always put yourself, maybe it should be visible, put, uh, put yourself on, um, in the middle, just above this band or below this band, and then you can you can prepare this uh, this maximum of the band. So even if there are other states, this doesn't matter as long that as there is a gap in which one can uh, fit in. Yeah, perhaps I, I I didn't insist enough on this. So we're always in the most excited state of the effective Hamiltonian, but actually there's well endless family of ex more excited states. But they are protected by this gap. You can see. So I don't know this. So somehow, what I think Joseph wanted to express that this, even if we prepare the excited, the most excited state, we are preparing actually a state that is really in the middle of the old no, it's, state. I would say it's quite low lying compared to all the other, yeah. Somehow the same trick has been used also in a Rydberg experiment because they are again, each time I have something like a retuning that I can place myself above or below some bands, I can prepare all the minimum or the maximum and preparing the maximum of the, of the band is like preparing the minimum or minus the Hamiltonian. That is essentially the, the idea. So may I uh, may I also ask or have a comment because this is really an interesting diagram, and so if I understand properly, so this is basically the phase diagram of the lowest and of the highest state yeah. from a certain. So and this is given somehow by this symmetry relation with respect to the inversion of this lambda because you would actually if you go. Uh, 
I mean, the what is the structure of the highest state would be the structure of the lowest state if you revert the parameters. Is it exactly. right? Okay. So now it would be interesting to see because because of this symmetry, you can construct probably this uh, phase diagram of of those extremal states, and it would be interesting to see what happens in the middle. Well, uh, actually, we 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 kind of know within the effective model because it's exactly the same. As ah, uh, where was it? Newest paper, yes. It's exactly this. This is the same, same Hamiltonian for a ferromagnetic. Yeah, yeah. Gas. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, so that's, okay, okay. That's what we do. That's how they are related. The first, this is this is related mm. to the anti-ferromagnetic diagram, and this is the ferromagnetic diagram. Okay, they are yeah. connected by this excited state quantum phase transition. Of a quantum oh, state okay. phases, so. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, are there more questions? I have also a question. Usually, in, 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 in the excited state quantum phase transitions we're used to work with, they depend strongly on the size of the system. So the larger the system, the 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 more abrupt are the changes, and 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 the closer you are to to a true uh, transition. Hmm. Is it exactly the same here, or or is it different? No, I, I guess it is the case. But we have the problem that we cannot have the system too large because otherwise uh, you would break these few more pictures, and then. Okay. Uh, well, Two large is how many atoms? Just for do you have oh, an idea? In my simulations, uh, we we use inspired by these experiments. Uh, I should have shortcuts. We, we put uh, simulations with ten thousand atoms, which are actually small condensates, but they are doable. And, and still, the approximation is is uh, all right with ten thousand yeah. atoms. Actually, the closer you are to resonance of the screen changing collision, the larger you can have the condensate for the for the reasons that I, I explained. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where, I don't know. but so, so if, if if I correctly understood, you are you are suggest you are providing a, a test ground for experimentalists, isn't it? So you're providing the, 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 yeah. the where they yes. should look at to find to find this. Exactly. Isn't it? And are there? Are you in collaboration with some experimentalists to 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 make the experiment and, and access this? Well, not not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I mean it, it's uh, it's not as easy as it may seem to do that, but it doesn't seem easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so are are there? Are there more questions or? I have or one question. Sorry, I have one question, Luis Santos here. Yes. Um, oh. So I did not understand it properly whether this is really an excited state quantum phase transition or a transition in the highest excited state. Because the, I think that they are two different things, right? Yeah, but, well. Because the, the mm. same, the, because a very, a very similar idea was employed in this paper that you were citing before of Lumin Duan, mm -hmm. in which they were studying this dynamical uh, phase transition uh, in the inverted uh, Hamiltonian, basically. And uh, I think that, I think that now that we are with the experts of excited state quantum phase transition, <clears throat> I, I think that the transition in the most excited state is not an excited state quantum phase transition, or I am wrong. Well, but in, in in reality, we are not in the most excited state. We are in an excited state. But you are you are making a transition in the say in a, in a state in which you have a transition in a single state, or how is how is it? Yeah, but but actually, it's the same uh, system as this one. Yes, the, this this I agree. But for example, in our case, we are. You see that you you can cross at different energies. Yeah, yeah, and and they're the same. If you would prepare the state, not exactly here, but here, 
you would see a very similar. So it's, it's a continuous physics from here. But I understood, th this was my question, because I understood that you were actually preparing in the, in the most excited state, so to say. Yeah, because it works then. So you, you can, but if you would prepare in, a, in another excited state that is a bit lower, it would essentially it would also work. But, but the, 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 the boundaries would be already fine and the amplitudes, uh, so the starting and so the, maybe the, 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 the state that we want to prepare wouldn't be exactly the same, but for a continuous range of values, it would share a lot of the properties. And actually, the simulators, the, the simulations, are not performed with the highest excited state. Of not even of the effective model because other because there, the mean field treatment doesn't work. Because because I think that I th I think that uh, if one prepares it in like in the paper of Lumin one, for example, if you prepare it yeah. in, the, in the most excited state, it's basically the same as doing a ground state phase transition or not. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So somehow this is true, but if we look from the point of view of the of the full uh, sock, full uh, full system, we are we are really in the middle of uh, everything. But it's true that we prepare through a gap, so it's like uh, having an stream. We are not in the in the where all the all the all the eigenstate collapse. Let's say. I see. So, so it, this was also partly related to what I asked to my question because I thought about that that you have like structures of the highest state and the structures phase structures of the lowest state but there is something in between and uh, those yeah. are the real ESQPTs somehow in between those two limits somehow so I would have I would say that indirectly even doing that for the highest state is somehow related to the ESQPT, but mm -hmm. but it's true that basically what you are probably doing or using now is something similar to the ground state structure, but only in the reverted Hamiltonian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somehow the, we could extend the, to the to the situation started by Luis that would be going in the in the middle, but indeed from the as Joseph said in practice we enter a bit because we can never do a preparation that will really stay just on the maximum, but we will enter a bit. But uh, yeah, from the protocol point of view, it's more practical to try to assess the, the highest. But from the point of view of the effect on the, as Giuseppe was saying, the, in a sense, also all the excited state as shown in the paper by by Luis and collaborator will be essentially through our map will be all of them will be stripe mm -hmm. uh, of the stripe uh, will have the stripe fissure let's say. Yeah, and then actually it will progressively vanish as we go from the bottom to the top of the phase I Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it is continuously connected across the whole excitation spectrum. That is the point. So you don't need this much precision in order to see the, the effects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no more no more questions or for our speaker. Let me thank Josep for, for his seminar. And I, I wish you all a happy Easter. And hopefully we will meet again 9th of April with the next seminar in the series.